All right, we're going to go ahead and get started. So good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us, and welcome to today's Launch for Lunch session, How to Build a Training Night Site in 30 Minutes. Before we jump in, let's run through some quick housekeeping notes. First of all, the audio is muted today, but we really do want to hear from you and make this webinar as interactive as possible. We love questions, so please use the Q&A widget at any point to ask either myself or Caesar any questions that you can think of. Also, throughout the webinar, we'll be sprinkling in some polls, so stay on the lookout for those. And finally, the session will be recorded and shared following the webinar. Here's a quick bit about the Launch Over Lunch series. So Launch Over Lunch is a series of live webcasts designed to provide both new and experienced learning professionals with the insights they need to get started fast. In these sessions, we'll roll up our metaphorical sleeves, walk through the basics, and get down to business by demonstrating how to build and theme your open edX site, create your first open edX course, and provide your learners with hands-on labs and exercises. So with that out of the way, let's kick off introductions. Hi, I'm Amanda, Head of Product Marketing here at Upsembler, and the other face on the line with me is Cesar Rufo. Hi everyone, nice to meet you. My name is Cesar, VP of Marketing here at Upsembler. Uh, I'm excited to be here with you all today. Awesome. Thanks so much, Caesar. So, all right, we're going to get this party started by launching today's webinar with our first poll. So how familiar are you guys with Open edX? Very familiar. You use it almost every day. Moderately just started somewhat, never heard of it or heard of it, but never use it and not familiar completely new. I'll let this run for just a few more seconds. All right, it looks like most of you are either new or moderately familiar. Great, thanks so much for sharing with that with us. And I'm gonna go ahead and pass it off to Caesar. Nice, all right, looks like we've got quite a few folks. Looks like most folks are really, have a, have a, a knowledge of Open edX. So this is really, really a helpful context to know. I um, just want to confirm, Amanda, can you see my screen? Are I you can. still seeing the, the slides? I am, yes. Okay, wonderful. So I'll just, I, I close out of presenter mode so I can just take a look at what's going on here. But again, thank you all for joining us. Um, and as Amanda mentioned, our goal is to roll up our sleeves and demonstrate live how to create and deploy a branded live online learning site powered by Open edX. And we're gonna try to do it quickly within 30 minutes. And we're gonna do it using Tahoe, AppSembler SaaS platform for Open edX. Um, but first off, before we even like jump into it, like why are we doing this? Um, so often we hear that people, they wanna build courses for their learners and they wanna deliver training content on the Open edX platform because one, uh, they want a platform that is reliable. Two, they want something that's innovative and it's continuously innovating. And three, they want something that's scalable. And I think above all, they want something that's actually a delight for both the learner and the course author. Luckily, Open edX is great for all of those things. However, as I know, it looks like most folks here are familiar with Open edX. If you try to deploy Open edX on yourself, uh, by yourself, um, chances are you'll know that it's not exactly the easiest thing to do. You may wind up spending weeks or even months trying to get up and running. Uh, you may end up spending a fair bit of financial resources and even may need technical resources. So for today's session, um, here we wanna show you how anyone, including myself, who we, I have almost zero technical background, I'm a marketer, um, I wanna show you how you can ultimately skip the technical side of, of Open edX and get a branded site up and running within 30 minutes so you can focus on what really matters most, which is creating course content for your learners, because that's where a lot of the great stuff of Open edX lives. And just a disclaimer, you know, to set expectations, we're not going to dive into Open edX course authoring and creation today. That's for a future session. So we'd love to hear feedback on that today. We just want to get something live that you can share with your team or show to your boss, and you know, we'll, we'll just take it from there. Um, <clears throat> so, and as Amanda mentioned, you know, I'm going to be going at like a bit of a pace, so feel free to, you know, pepper in any questions that you guys might have. Um, before we even dive into it, um, I like to start off with the end in mind and show a customer example. So right now, as you can see, um, and just so you can kind of get a sense of like what's possible with OpenEdX. 
So right now we're looking at one of AppSembler's customers. Amanda, can you see my uh, the screen for Redis Labs? I can. Yep. Perfect. So right now we are looking at the Redis University by Redis Labs. And for those those of you who don't know about Redis Labs, they're the home of uh, the open source Redis, which is the world's fastest in-memory database platform. Um, and they are the most loved uh, database by developers. And recently they launched, they announced the launch of Redis University, which is the number one um, online destination for Redis users. You can actually just go to the URL here on your own if you'd like, uh, university.redislabs.com. Um, as you can see, this is an open edX powered site built with uh, AppSembler's uh, SaaS platform Tahoe. And at this year's Redis conference 2018, they unveiled this Redis University to uh, over a thousand attendees. And they already have within like less than a, one or two weeks, uh, hundreds of student registrations. Um, but I'll walk you real briefly through it. As you can see, a uh, very simple site where they, Redis, you know, Redis Labs, they have their branding here at the very top, they have their colors. And if you click on the menu item, you can see they've got all these various options here. I can click on this button to enroll for free. I can register there as well. If I scroll down, there is RU101, an introduction to Redis data structure. So you can learn more about their first course here. Um, they've got some beautiful icons here that describe their various learning paths and options. And then right here is their first course, which actually goes live on June 5th, and it is a free course. Um, and you know, this is again, a really simple site that was created within minutes um, using almost zero technical resources. As you can see, I just also reduced the screen size and it is a mobile responsive website. Um, so it also the, the website, the training site looks great on mobile devices as well. Um, so that's enough about that. I don't want to go into too much detail, but just so you kind of can get a sense of what's possible with literally again, zero, uh, technical expertise. Um, so the first step here for how we're going to start creating our own site is to go to appsembler.com forward slash Tahoe forward slash trial. Um, you know, I don't recommend that we, you know, if you'd like, you can follow along as we do this. Um, but this is more of a show and then you can, you know, we'll have the recording and you can follow along as well, but definitely uh, record this link here and take notes. So I'm um, definitely go to that link to spin up your own free trial. I'm there right now. I'm going to click on this free trial button, get started. So let's build your open edX site. And also just a, a heads up, um, as we go through this sign up process to build a, a live site, um, you know, it's a, for a free 30 day trial. So there's no, uh, we're not going to re request any uh, financial or credit card information for you from you. There's zero strings attached. Um, we're just going to create a demo site right now. So I'm going to click here and go to first step. And then I am going to type in my name. So this is a really fun, exciting part. Today is May 10th at assembler.com assembler and then Caesar underscore May 10th. Next step, so I'm gonna get my activation email. <clears throat> Hold on a second, I hope you all don't see my email there. Okay. Now I just need to enter in my password. Next step, nope, don't remember that stuff please. Now, at step four here, we're seeing during the sign up process, it says select your subdomain, where you can see here, I can put any type of uh, subdomain that I like. Let's say Caesar is awesome .com. Um When you're spinning up your own free trial, you'll always have this subdomain, you'll always have this domain, uh, your site dash .com. Um, If you want to have your own custom domain, let's say it's university.mycompany.com or learning.mycompany.com. You can obviously do that, but that's with one of our paid uh, professional plans, um, which you can definitely learn more about. But for you know, our intensive purposes here, we'll just call this appsembler-test-caesar-may10.tahoe.appsembler.com. Let's call this, name the site Caesar's site. <clears throat> Now, this is an interesting thing. 
you know, we can here add our branding and our colors. And, you know, if you don't have, let's say, your, um, your branding colors on hand, um, you can, you know, always skip this step. Or you can use a free Chrome plugin. So I, I've got here uh, a color picker tool. I think it's it's a free tool from Colorzilla. So you can just pick a color from your page and, and use that. I've already got my pay, uh, my colors figured out, so I'm just gonna drop them in here. So for my primary brand color, rather than this red, I'm gonna drop in this kind of a green color. I like that color a lot. Um, and then for my CTA button background color, um, CTA, just for those of you who don't know, it's a call to action. Uh, I'm going to drop in this bluish color there as well. I'm going to hit next step. And now I can also upload my logo. Normally doing these small tasks like changing colors, uploading and changing logos would require engineering resources here. We're just going to do it ourselves and it'll take just a second. So I'm going to drop an AppSumbler's logo there and hit next step. And then I can choose, you know, various fonts. Um, I'm going to choose Open Sans for now, but you know, just because I selected this now doesn't mean that you know I'm married to this. I can always change this. There are other, there are more options later on in within the platform that you can select. Um, hit next step there. And hello world, your Open edX site is live. So there are three options here. Um, the first option is Management Console. And this is where you can design and manage your site. Um, the second one here is LMS. This is where you can view what the site looks like to your learners. And three here is Studio, and this is where you can actually create courses. We're gonna spend most of our time today looking at these two. Um, but first, I'll click here on LMS and we'll look at this new tab. So this is a site that was created, um, that we literally just created together here. So if you just go to this URL, appsembler test caesar um, you'll see this link. Um, you'll see this website. <clears throat> and right there, you'll see we've got some, you know, base, or got our logo there. We've got our colors, hit the menu item. We've got all our colors. And if you scroll down, we've got all these various uh, elements. And uh, obviously, a lot of it is just like lorem ipsum filler text, which we can always change later. Um, but this is what we're going to get started, and I'll get started with. And also, if you just squeeze this here, reduce the size, you'll see that the website is also mobile responsive um, as well. Um, okay, so that's what the site looks like to learners. Now, if I click here on Management Console. This is the console within Tahoe where you can access the learner site, you can access Studio, you can edit your pages and you know, update the look and feel. Um, so when you log in for the first time, you'll see this simple uh, tutorial. It's actually just like a few steps walk through. We'll go through it together. So welcome to Tahoe. I'll click on Let's Go. And then the first step here that you recommend is add team members under user management. If I click Next, there is a page editor where you can create and edit pages. Appearance settings, this is again where you can change look and feel. And then if I want to go at any point and see what the learner facing site looks like, I can just go there to LMS. And then over here is Studio, where I can ultimately create my courses. So I'm going to hit close. And you know, this for some of you folks, this might be the first time that you're seeing the console. Um, the first thing that I actually want to point out here is this little chat widget in the bottom right corner. Um, this is a live chat widget, which is actually manned by our own team members all across the globe. Um, and I highly recommend it. Our customers and our users, they, uh, they love using this live chat widget because it provides them with uh, access directly to our team members, where Usually one of our team members will respond within, uh, within a few minutes to answer any questions they may have. Um, so definitely feel free to use this. Oh, okay, there you go. Thanks, Amanda. <laughs> sure. <laughs> awesome. So you can always use this live chat widget anytime to ask questions if you're stuck or if you need any help. Um, so the first step that I always like to do is add a user. You know, it's always more fun when you add friends. So I'm going to add Amanda as a user here in the user management section. So Amanda plus May 10 at Assembler. 
dot com Amanda Gross Amanda Ten. Lovely. Going to invite you as a user. So I always recommend adding your own team members so that they can also help out in creating or editing your site. Um, it's good. Let's see. Are there, I want to pause. Are there any questions so far that are in the in the chat? So I'm seeing a question question here from Christopher Haynes. Are those admin permissions site wide or core specific? Right now, those are site wide, and we'll talk a little bit more about core uh, core specific. Uh, permissions later on. Um, that's a great question. Cool. So we already went through managing users. So I want to go now to the page editor. And as you can see here, under page editor, there are all these various pages. At the very top, there's our index page, also known as our home page. And this is where we'll spend a lot of our time editing this home page today. Um, but you'll see there's a course catalog page which you are welcome to edit. You can enable or disable the privacy policy page. There's an about us page, um, copyright page. You can create your own pages. So let's go here to edit page for index. And um, the first thing I want to call out, this might be new to some folks, um, but you'll see that there are all these various content blocks that are broken out into different layouts. Um, so here's one content block, and that is essentially the same thing as this content block or section right there. So whenever I, I refer to content block, this is what I'm referring to, is these various sections. Like here is the second content block here, and that is what the page is broken up into, and that's what that is referring to right there. Um, before we even start diving into this, because this can be a little bit overwhelming, my first, like what I usually like to do, is I like to actually just start with a template that I like. Um, so I'm just gonna go here to the template gallery in the top right corner of the page editor and select templates. And you'll see here there are a couple of different options. There's a clean slate. I really like the simple starter template. So I'm gonna select that to review it. And here's what it looks like. Really simple, uh, single column page all across the board. Um, if you all remember uh, the Redis University training site that we looked at earlier, this is the same exact format that they are more or less using. I'm gonna hit apply template and hit save changes. Now, if I just look at my site here, whoops, there it is. I've still got my logo, I've still got my branding, but now you'll see here we've got this different background, this, this stock image is along with this, uh, this section right there. So <clears throat> the first thing I'm going to do, and now we're going to actually get our hands dirty. So the first thing I want to do is I'm not a huge fan. It's a pretty cool background image, but uh, I want to replace it, let's say, with my own hero image that aligns with my branding. So I'm just going to go, before I go too fast, you'll see here in these various content blocks or layouts um, a few things. One, I can add various items and elements. So if I click add an item, there are elements here I can add, such as heading text, paragraph text, uh, a WYSIWYG type of HTML content block. I can add images. Um, if I click here, layouts, I can also edit the layout of the existing or add a new layout, like a single column or two column or even three columns. Um, page specific, we'll talk about this one later for course listings. But let's add a big heading there. And then off afterwards, let's add a uh, paragraph text. And then let's add here a nice call to action button, similar to what our friends at Redis did. And then if I click here and show options, this is now for the overall content block. I can actually edit or upload a background image. So I'm going to do this one that I like a lot. Lovely. Hitting save changes. <clears throat> so this is what the site looks like. Obviously, this is not awesome, and we're gonna sh we're gonna show you all how to edit these things. Um, but it's these little things. I just want to remind you all that normally would take you know like some work on the back end, you know, working with uh, a developer resource to make these things happen. And now, as you can see, just with a few clicks, you can actually edit these things, these items yourself. So I want to add here, so I want to make this site about virtual labs. So I'm just going to 
copies from text that I had saved earlier. Let's call this Welcome to the Virtual Labs Training Academy. And then let's make this text really big and bold, 72. And then let's see, let's make the text white. And then we've got the margins look all fine. Now the paragraph text beneath it, I will drop in here. Um, say, to get, say goodbye to in-person software training. And then let's increase the font size there and let's also make it white. And then 505 for the margins. And then lastly, I wanna update this button. Let's call it learn more, virtual-labs. And then let's see, what's the size that I want there? Um, let's make it a little bit larger at size 20. And then let's see, I don't want a border, so I'm gonna remove that. <clears throat> and then just gonna update the background color for the, for the button. And I'll hit save changes. Let's see what that looks like right now. There we go. Huh. That text didn't come out as white as I wanted it, but you know what this will do for now. So you'll see we've got at the very top section like a nice hero image with text to welcome the learner. And then if you click there, it drives directly to um, the landing page that I wanna drive folks to. Um, <clears throat> so now let's edit the section below. Um, actually, before we even do that, what I think would be interesting is let's get a course added. So I'm going to go here to studio. And again, like I said, we're not gonna spend too much time here um, in, in, in today's session. We're not gonna spend time creating courses, um, but this is a good place to actually show like what a course would look like on the learner site. So I'm gonna click on sign in. And again, I access that from the top right section of the management console. Let's call it May 10. I think that's the password I used. Okay, so now as you can see in Studio, again, it's run a free trial right now, which is why we've got this ominous timer here. But you can create your first course, um, especially if you don't have a course. So let's call it Introduction to Virtual Labs. That's one of AppSembler's products. Let's call it VL101, and then let's call it 2018. Um, two. There's no like right or wrong way to do these things, but I'm just creating these various course names, course numbers, and a course run. I'll hit create. Great. And now you can see I can, there's, I have all of these options to create new sections if I'd like, um, but I'm going to hold off on doing that. And instead, I already have a course. Um, that's exported that I'd like to import. So if, especially if you're an existing Open edX user and you already have your own courses, um, rather than creating from scratch, you can actually just import them. Um, so I'm just gonna click right there, choose a file to import, and this is the one I'd like to select. And I'd like to replace my course with that file. And while that's loading, Amanda, do you wanna like launch our next poll? Yeah, sure. So I'm going to go ahead and do that right now. So our next poll, we're trying to take the temperature of when you guys are looking to launch your training site. So maybe you're, you're really into it and you want to get started in the next one to three months, the next three to nine months, after nine months, or you're already live. So I'll let this simmer for a few more seconds. That was a nice, well-needed break. I needed a sip of water. <laughs> a lot of talking. <laughs> Gotta stay hydrated. <laughs> All right, it looks like most of you are already live, which is great. And then we have a few people who are looking to get started imminently, and then some over the course of the year. Wonderful. That's awesome. Oh, these are really great results. Awesome. Yeah, thanks so much, everybody. Thank you all. Great. <clears throat> so... Go ahead. I did have one question for you if you have a second while we're Absolutely. in a bit of a break. So Chris Haynes had another question. Does the site that you're building now have the capacity to dis display a course card with an en enrollment button? Excuse me. That is a fantastic question, uh, Chris. 
And I feel like you're teeing this up for me very nicely. We'll, we'll cover that in a few seconds. Um, so you'll see here, I imported this course. And um, this course already, I, I, for that course, I had already added a course card. And we'll see what that looks like shortly on the learner facing site. Um, for those of you who don't know what a course card image is, you know, when you have your various courses listed in your website, you can, you know, you can actually brand these various courses. So um, I'll, sh I'll show you, it's better to just show and rather than tell. Um, <clears throat> we will do that here. So if we look here at our very bottom, um, if we look at our site here, you see there's this section there. We actually have another section here that's kind of missing. So I'm going to update that. You'll see here, I'm, as I mentioned, you can add various elements that are page specific. And there's this one here called courses uh, listings. Actually, before I do that, I wanna have, let's say some paragraph text followed by that course listings. Um, so I'm gonna address your question directly, Chris. Um, so if I go here for index page course listing, I have multiple options. And it's basically, how do you want these tiles to show up on your website? I like this one, tile type one. Um, so I'm gonna keep that. And then let's say um, upcoming courses. And then let's make that nice and big. And let's make that bold. And let's make that center aligned. And then hit save changes, okay. Let's see now what the site looks like, especially now that we just imported our first course. There you go. So you'll see here, again, we've got the same hero image with the welcome text that we've got there. This text here remains the same. And you'll see here, we've got our very first course that we imported earlier. And we've got this lovely course, in, uh, course card image. Um, so luckily, since I already had that imported, um, I don't need to, uh, to, to add that from scratch. Um, but we'll also, we can show you too how to update and change a course card image. Um, but does that address your question, uh, Chris? He says, thanks, it does. Then my job here is done. Um, <laughs> <Awesome>. <laughs> great, thank you, Chris, for the question. So let's see, I'm, let's, uh, let's just make this site like a little bit less empty. I'll, I'll add in some more text. Just again, to sh it's just to illustrate how easy it is to edit things and, and create something that's actually worth showing to your boss. So I'll add this paragraph text here. I wanna now edit this section here with all this lore bits and text. It doesn't make me very happy right there. So I'm gonna hit select a bold font, followed by size 36, and then text is all good. Now I'm gonna hide that one and I now want to update this lorem ipsum text below because I had just updated that title text right there. So paragraph text, let's see, I'm going to drop in a nice little plug again for our fun virtual labs product and then going to drop in here. So a light text font is fine, um, size 20, make it larger and then hit save. And now let's see what that looks like. <clears throat> Lovely. Welcome to the Virtual Labs Training Academy. We've got this one section here, learn by doing. If I wanted to, I can add background images here as well. Um, but this is, this is a site that's, again, live that I can now share with my boss, but I, I've heard some folks say that like, what if I don't want to have, you know, like have my learners register for this right away? Like this is a, you know, right now this site is live. Like let's say it's not ready to be share, shared with, with the world. And that's fine, we can actually edit these things, again, ourselves without relying on engineering resources, we can edit these things in the settings. So for example, if you go to general settings within the management console, there are all these, there's this section here called registration settings, where I can now disable here registration button in site navigation. So that'll remove that. Um, I can also, you know, disable the link to registration form on the login page if I wanted. Um, or I can even just completely disable the registration form. Um, so that makes things a lot easier for me. 
Um, let's say I'm not ready to show everybody all the courses that I've got, or maybe my courses are still in progress. I can disable the course catalog if I wanted. So I can hit that disable button. And uh, here's another section here called search engine indexing. Um, so generally, when you publish your site, like it is now being indexed by, by Google, by various search engines. So your site is actually, you know, you can actually be found and discovered, which is a great thing, especially if you're trying to attract more learners. But let's say you want to make this an internal only site. You don't want to make this more public. You can actually just disable the search engine indexing um, feature right there. And then lastly, within the settings is Google Analytics tracking. Let's say you want to find out like what your learners are doing. You want to tie this directly to your Google Analytics um, instance. You can actually drop in your tracking ID right there. Again, normally, uh, this is just great that you can do this yourself um, without touching a single line of code. So I'm going to hit save there. And just so we can see what it looks like now. There you go. The registration button is gone. And yeah, so now my course there is gone and you can't explore courses. Um, you can still see this right here, the upcoming courses, but like, you know, again, this is now a more of a private course. Let's see. What other super important features do we want to cover in the time that we've got left? I know we're coming up on time soon. Uh, appearance settings. So over here, as you remembered, when we went to the sign up wizard, I had selected my various colors. Um, let's say I wanted to change those colors, or let's say I didn't have what I wanted when I during the sign-up process. I can change them directly right here for the primary brand color, the text color, the call to action buttons colors, the text colors. So I can always change those there. If I want to change my logo assets, I can do that here. As you notice, I didn't upload a negative version of our logo. I can do that. I can also upload various icons, and I can also upload a favicon. Uh, just for those of you who don't know, favicon is basically what I'm pointing at uh, right here. Um, so you can actually just, you know, add another level of branding. So right now it's a blank favicon, so there's there's nothing to display there, but you can always upload that. Um, fonts, you can also change here the various fonts. Um, so again, if you didn't want to select it earlier, you can always do that now. Um, let's see, I think we're coming up soon. LMS header and footer. So let's say I wanted to add more items to the header over here. Let's say I wanted a link that actually drives to my homepage. Um, first, I can select the various you know, look and feels of, of my header. Um, <clears throat> but now if I scroll down here to the header menu section for non-authenticated visitors, again, you don't need to log in to see these header menu items. I can, I can add a new item here and let's call it virtual labs and then appsembler, HTTPS, appsembler.com forward slash virtual dash labs and then open it in a new tab, hit save. There you go, virtual labs right there. If I click there it now also drives directly to our external site. Um, you'll probably notice here header menu for authenticated visitors. So let's say you wanted a special set of menu items uh, visible to registered learners. You can always add these items there as well. Um, we're not going to do that right now, but you do have that option to do so. Um, <clears throat> and I know we've got about 10 minutes or so left for Q&A. So I'm going to pause and just wrap up there. You'll see there's a ton that you can do within the management console, with, within Tahoe's management console. But again, the, the objective of today's session was to just kind of lightning round, show you how to get something up and running so that you, know, you too can create this site that you can actually show to your learners or to your boss and without having to spend a single dime. Um, that's the purpose here. So I hope this was helpful for anyone who's, who's new or was curious about how to create your own open edX site. Um, and thank you all so much for your questions. I'm going to pass it off now to Amanda. Awesome. Thanks so much, Caesar. So I'm going to go ahead and launch our final poll of today. So 
Given this was such a great session, what would you like to see us cover in a future launch of our lunch session? We have course authoring, the basics, course authoring, more advanced, SSO, single sign-on, custom domains, how to offer certificates, the hidden features of Open edX and X blocks. So lots of food for thought here. We'll get this going for a few more seconds. Looks like we have just about everybody. So I'm gonna go ahead and end it. And the winner is X blocks. And I know there's a ton to be learned on that. So that could be many, many sessions in the making, but thank you. We'll go ahead and queue that up for our next launch over lunch. All right. So it looks like the most popular one here is, yeah, this, this is absolutely fantastic. I'm going to take a screenshot of this. This is really valuable information, everybody. <laughs> Someone um, wants to vote for SSO twice. <laughs> <laughs> that important. Good to see. Um, and then Caesar, I did have a bunch of questions come through for you. So the first one comes from our attendee, uh, Danielle. So are you able to customize what data fields are requested on the registration form? That's a great question. And I'm actually, so that's a, hey, hey Nate, are you there in the line? Oh, you're on mute, Nate. I'm here. Yep. Wonderful. So I'm actually going to pass that one over to you since, you know, you know more of the ins and outs. So can you just repeat the question one more time for the audience, Amanda? Sure. Are you able to customize what data fields are requested on the registration form? Yeah. So right now um, we just capture three fields. We capture the full name, uh, the uh, email address and the password. Um, general design practice is that you want to keep your registration form minimal so that you can get people in as quickly as possible and capture their email address. And then what we recommend is progressive profiling. So once you've got them in your system, then you can reach out to them again and ask additional questions, demographic information. Uh, but you don't want to put anything in the way causing friction to get people registered and signed up. Um, so one way that you can capture that information is, is setting up a uh, survey X block at the beginning of your course. So everyone who enrolls in your course before they can start taking the course, you can ask any number of questions as a prerequisite before they can uh, actually start accessing the course content. Um, you can also do entrance exams if you want to make, um, you know, something that's a little bit more graded. Um, but just for basic demographic information, a survey X block is, is typically the way to go. Awesome. Thanks so much, Nate. Does that uh, cover your question, Danielle? Yep, she said that is great info. Thank you so much. Great. Perfect. Okay, so another. I, I, I think you and I are going to tag team this Q and A, especially. Yeah, I love the questions. the <laughs> special appearances. Is, is apropos. Mm -hmm. So the next question, and I'll leave it open to the floor. Either of you can pick it up and grab it. Uh, can we group courses into learning paths? And that one is from this Raul? is from Raul. Yep. Okay, great. I'll pass it off to you, Nate. <laughs> All right. Um, so yeah, learning paths is something that you may have seen on edX.org. They have a, a kind of edX specific term called X series. And this is a, another way of thinking about this is bundling of courses. So instead of enrolling for a single course, you enroll in a bundle of courses. And the idea is that there's a recommended path in order in which you should take those courses um, to one after the other. Um, that's something that we don't have currently in Tahoe. Um, we do, as you saw Caesar build uh, the homepage in 10 or 20 minutes, you could create those learning paths uh, just using our page editor and then just create links to those different courses. So right now that's the recommended way of doing that, but learning paths is a, capability that we are looking to add to the Tahoe platform in the near future. Great. And then another one from Raul Spitfire, a bunch of questions. So do you offer multilingual support? So we do have uh, some limited support for different languages. I believe Spanish is currently enabled uh, on Tahoe. So when you log in, you can go to your um, your student profile and you'll you can choose your preferred language and I believe if you have that language set in your in your browser it will detect that your 
your preferred language is Spanish and it will show you the Spanish site. Um, not all the language packs that are available in Open edX have been fully translated. So we've been kind of rolling those out on a, on a case by case basis as we have customers requesting them. Um, but we definitely have plans to uh, increase the multilingual localization capabilities of the platform. Got it, thanks. And then another one from Raul, which is, a, which is usually top of mind for people. So are your reports from Open edX or do you have some of your own? Is there one regarding reporting logins, activity, activity of the site and students? So just data-driven perspective. Yep, that's a great question. So um, right now we just support the basic um, reports that are available from the instructor dashboard and those reports are on a per course basis. Um, that being said, we, we just today um, demoed our, our upcoming edX figures reporting app that we're building uh, as an open source add-on to open edX. And it's designed to be a lightweight analytics reporting app that analyzes your student data around enrollments, uh, registrations, completions, and student progress. And that can be rendered right within your, um, right within your open edX site. That's something that we're gonna be rolling out in the next few months um, as we uh, build that as a community driven project. So it is open source. Um, we encourage people to try it out. If you have a standalone open edX site and wanna, wanna play with it and give us feedback, we definitely encourage people to try it out. Great. And then another one from Raul, will there be support if we wanted to port over older Open edX courses um, into the current version of Open edX? Yeah, so as you saw Caesar do in the demo, you can import uh, courses as long as they're a, a compressed archive file, we can import them into our platform. Um, if your course is really old and it's using older versions of Xbox, then there might be some import issues, but most courses that you've created with kind of a stock, you know, out of the box version of Open edX, even if it's a version or two behind, should be importable into, into Tahoe. Great, thanks so much, Nate. So we are running short on time, so I'm gonna wrap things up. But before we say goodbye, if you are interested in learning more about Assembler, I encourage you to send us a note or visit the link shown more to, or to see a live demo. Also, a quick heads up that our next launch of our lunch, lunch session is just around the corner and will feature our guest surprise speaker today, CEO and founder of Assembler, <laughs> Nate Ani, and he'll be discussing how to launch a virtual lab over lunch. So you can find our complete registration details by visiting the URL shown on the screen and you also get a copy of the recording so you'll have this saved um, for future reference. But yeah, thank you so much for everyone who joined us for today's webinar. We had so much fun with everybody and a special thanks for Caesar, to Caesar for taking the time to speak with us today and Nate for joining us. Please Absolutely. check your yeah, please check your inbox tomorrow for a recording of the webinar and we'll see you next time. Thanks so much everyone. Thanks Amanda. Thank you all and uh, we'll send Thanks. you a recording soon. Thank you so much again for joining us. Thanks everybody. All Bye right. guys. Bye. Thank Bye. you.